Welcome to my channel. My name is Krista Llewellyn and I am a makeup artist and makeup educator. And today I'm going to be showing you a demo of how to do scars in three different ways. I'm going to show you how to apply a foam latex scar, a prose transfer, as well as doing some two-dimensional scars. Before we get started, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. But now we're going to get into the actual scar making. So what? maybe, I don't know. How do I transition? The first step of our demo is going to be prepping the skin. Now, just with any beauty makeup, prepping the skin is super, super important with special effects. Typically, our skin has a little bit of a layer of oil and you'll want to take away that oil or any dirt residue before doing any of your prosthetic applications or even if you're just going over with paint because that oil will sort of get in the way of the glues and they won't stick as well or your product won't stick as well. So it's always good to prep your skin first. And what I usually use when I prep my skin for any of my clients or on myself personally is I use witch hazel. So I have some regular witch hazel here. Now this is different from my previous video with my uh, Thayer's witch hazel. That particular type of witch hazel is formulated with aloe vera. And so I don't want any aloe or any other essential oils to get in the way of my product. So I am just going with straight witch hazel nothing else. You can also use things like Sea Breeze or Kiehl's has a blue astringent that you can use, but the key word in that is astringent. You want something that's going to take away the oil on your skin. So I just got a little cotton round full of witch hazel. So now I have all that witch hazel on there. And the next step that I'm going to do to prep my skin is actually put a barrier cream. So there's a couple of different types of barrier creams that you can buy. The one I'm going to be using today is called Skin Saver. You can also get a product called Derma Shield. It does a little bit of the same thing, but I like Skin Saver a little bit more because I find it a bit more hydrating for my skin. So I have my Skin Saver. I'm going to squirt a little bit out onto my palette. And then I have a sponge, taking a little bit of that product onto my sponge and going all over the face or just in the area where you will be applying your prosthetic. Skin Saver is really, really nice if you have a client whose skin is super sensitive. You wanna let that completely dry out before you apply any prosthetic or paint on it. it doesn't take too long, especially if you've done a nice light layer. Now that my skin is all nice and prepped, we can start in with the prosthetic application. I'm going to start with my foam latex scar, mostly because it's the biggest and the oddest shaped one. And I'm going to be using a Rubberware Y scar. Now I've had this for quite some time. I haven't really had the um, opportunity to use this, but I've had it in my kit for a while, so I figured I'd use it now. Typically when I do scars, it's going to be prose transfers or just painting them in depending on how big the scar is or even things like third degree buildup or silicone appliances. But you can really create a scar with anything in special effects. And I just happen to have this one. It's a really good one to start out with when you want to maybe just tiptoe your way into foam latex application. So. We'll start here. So here is our foam latex scar. The edges of them are super thin and we want them to stay that way. So be very gentle when you're picking up your prosthetic. I'm just going to kind of get an idea of where I want my scar to be placed. Always have reference photos. That is a big number one thing is always have reference photos for whatever you do. I have a couple pulled up on my computer to reference in terms of color, placement, things like that. But it's always best to work off of real photos and not photos of other makeups. You'll go into some deep parts of the internet to find some of these reference photos. So I think that I want my scar to go sort of down my face this way. And some of these higher points are going to be where the scar is the biggest. And then I have another scar, a longer scar that will go down here and everything else in between will paint with just, uh, with just paint. So now that I have the area sort of placed, I'm gonna start with glue. I'm going to be using 
Prose adhesive, which I like to use for foam latex because it's a little bit less expensive than Telesis, but it still holds on pretty well. So I'm taking a little brush for my glue. And this is a glue brush that I've gotten from Delium Tools. You can also use things like a Q-tip. Brushes are best for me. But if you don't want to clean out a brush, you can definitely use a Q-tip. What I'm first doing is just dabbing a little bit of glue to the inside of my prosthetic. Be careful to avoid the edges and just a very small amount of glue. So while that's drying for a second, I wanna show you just how much glue I've poured out. This, this very small, it's like not even, it's not even fully covering the bottom of my cup here. Not even like half of that. Not even half of covering my cup, just just the smallest little amount. I see a lot of times, a lot of people will just fill this cup up for a prosthetic application. You don't need to do that. It's a waste of product. It will dry up on you. And like I said, Prosade is cheaper, but it ain't cheap. So a little tiny bit at a time. And for this particular application, you'll need just like the smallest amount. Just a itty, just a little nano bit. So, don't overfill your cup. Save yourself some money. I'm gonna just go right in the center of where I want this to be. And add a little bit of glue to my skin. So just in the center there. And you wanna let the glue dry all the way. So, Prosade is a contact adhesive which means two things. Both sides need to be dried thoroughly. Best when applied when dry and tacky. And the second thing is going to be pressure. So you want to adhere that pressure to the skin. You don't want to like smash someone in the face, but you do need a little bit of pressure for the glue to actually adhere properly. So all the way dry and pressure. And you can tell when the glue is dry because it goes clear. It's not really that milky white anymore. And again, you want to be very light handed with the prosade. You don't want to see a big white streak on your face when you're first applying it. Just a small little tiny bit. So I have my scar. I'm going to gently place it in the center where I had put that glue. Now I'm going to go through now I'm gonna go through and glue the rest of it. So a good learning moment here is I've had my edge rolled a little bit on here. So what you'll wanna do is with a small little brush with a little bit of 99% alcohol is you'll try to get underneath that edge and roll it back up off of itself. I sort of got that edge unrolled and now the glue is dry so I'm going to gently lift and place it. I'll need more glue up there. So now the main body of my scar is glued on. I'm going to go around with a thinner brush and really get into all of those edges to make sure everything's laid down perfectly. Now you can see why I like these tiny little angled brushes. This brush is actually just a angled eyeliner brush, but it really helps to get into these small little spaces. So you can get in there and then tap it down. 
a, a trick that I learned when you want to see if there's any edges that are unglued is you very gently press into the piece and away from the edge. And that will reveal any sort of edge that isn't glued down all the way. Look at these up here. Now that I have everything nice and glued down, the next step is going to be finding any edges that are maybe not so good, that rolled over, that sort of placed a little weird, that are maybe a little bit too thick, and going through and adding a little bit of Prosade cream or Prosade Bondo to those areas. So I'm gonna use my Prosade cream, which is a little bit of a creamier consistency than my Bondo, which is a little thicker. Uh, since these are smaller edges, I don't really need that super thick Bondo. And I'm going to take my spatula, and I have a little bit poured out. So I'm just going to take a little bit on my spatula, and going against the edge first to fill it in, and then smoothing it out. You want to be fairly light-handed with this. Too much pressure and you will push the product away. So you wanna let your Prosade Cream or Prosade Bondo dry completely. It won't go 100% clear, but depending on how thick it is, it will go fairly translucent. You can speed that process up with a fan or a hair dryer. If you're using a hair dryer, just sort of put your hand in the way to check the temperature um, or make sure you're using the cool setting. Now that everything's dry, I'm going to seal in my foam latex with a little bit of Pax paint. Now it's very important to seal any foam latex piece because it essentially works like a sponge. It's sort of the same material. If you look at like a latex sponge, it's sort of like bouncy and has those nice airy holes in them. Foam latex is the same thing. And because of that, it will absorb any paint that you put on top of it unless you seal it first. You can seal it with Pax paint or you can seal it with just Prosade in general or you can also use a rubber mask grease paint. I'm using some Mel Packs, so you can either buy your Packs paint or you can make it yourself. I always tell people that if you are making your own Packs paint, that you wanna make sure that the acrylic paint that you buy is skin safe. You don't really wanna use a like craft acrylic paint, the ones that are nice and really thin. You want to use more of like the Liquitex ones that come in the squeezy tubes. So I've put a little bit of my Pax paint out onto my palette and I'm going to thin it out a little bit with some Prosade. And I'm taking a small brush. So you want to have the Pax paint either be close to the skin tone or be maybe a little bit redder than the skin tone. This is definitely lighter than my skin tone, but I'm gonna go over it with a lot of paint. So we're going with this for today. It does create less work for yourself if you're going to start out with something that matches the skin tone better or go a little bit red. But I have a lot of this one, so we're using it. I lied, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to this because I think it's a little too light. So I have just red Pax paint that I'm gonna add into my skin tone one. Oh yeah, that's better. And you wanna make sure, again, you don't go too thick with the Pax, especially on the skin. You want it nice and feathered out on the skin mostly just covering the prosthetic itself. And the reason why you wanna go with more of a red base 
or a pinky base, if you don't have the exact skin tone, is that we all have a little bit of warmth underneath us because of blood and muscle and all of that. So everyone will have a little bit of red underneath their skin. And then you can paint the skin tone on top and it will read through like real skin. So now I have the PAX paint on. I'm gonna let it dry for another second and then I'm going to press a little bit of our CMA no color powder into it just so that it doesn't stay tacky. You don't have to worry about that too much with the Mel PAX, but since I did add some of my own PAX into it, it's gonna stay a little sticky. Now I'm gonna take a small brush with a little bit of our CMA powder and gently dust the powder on. This powdering stage will also help to reveal any edges that you maybe didn't grab. You can always go back and fix those edges. And you want to dust off any excess powder. So that's applying the foam latex. I'm going to wait to paint it until I have my other scar on so that the paint is cohesive. The next thing I'm going to apply is a Praze transfer. So for the Praze transfer, it's made out of Praze Bondo or Praze cream that has been dehydrated. First it's frozen, then it's dehydrated, and then you can put them onto little transfer sheets like this, or you can apply them straight out of the mold. I have these old transfers. I honestly, to be real with you guys, I don't know how well it will apply because it's really old. I think that this is like, I want to say that these are six years old, maybe five. I want to, I'm going to say it's five, four or five. These are four or five years old and they've been like this the entire time which typically when you're using a Praze transfer I don't like to put the water side paper on it until I am ready to apply it so usually I'll have them carried on their transfer paper uh, just sitting in like a pizza box or something and then I apply the water side paper which is like a temporary tattoo afterwards so we'll see how this one goes but the idea for it is going to be sort of going down this way as if the scar went down that way. It is a little bit too long for my liking, so I'm gonna snip it in half. So I am going to cut this in half, but I'm not gonna just like, you know, cut off part of it, like the tail end, and then that's gonna be my length. I'm gonna cut it in half and like take out a chunk in here towards the middle. And that way I'm going to place the two of them together and it will be shorter and still keep the tapered edges of it. I'm going to take out like half inch, maybe more, eh, three quarters of an inch. So I've taken out this chunk and I'm going to set it aside in case I need it. So now that I've cut it in half, I'm going to start to apply it. First you'll need to get a little cotton round and some water. Now you can either use the water in a spray bottle. I've poured out a little CC cup full of water that I'm going to dip my little cotton round in. Big, big, big important thing that you need to do. Remember to do this because I have forgotten to do it several times. Take off the clear acetate paper. So there's a little lip on here. Take this off. If you forget, you won't be able to use it anymore because you're going to stick it onto there. Always take off the acetate paper. But now I have a sticky little Praze transfer that I'm just going to stick on my skin and then take a little bit of a water to, with a cotton round to release the water slide paper and then it will be on my skin. So I'm gonna place it first. So I've placed it on there. Oh, I have a feeling this isn't gonna be sticky. Yeah, you know what? This is an old one, let me put a little bit of Prazade on it. Even with regular transfers, you can prep the skin with a little bit of Prazade if you wanna really make sure that it sticks throughout the day. But for the most part, they should be sticky enough to stick to your skin, unless they're five years old. So now that we have that, Oh yeah, that's better, that's gonna stick. So I have it placed on my face. I'm gonna really saturate this cotton round. You don't want it dripping, but you want it full of water. And really saturate that water slide paper. 
and really press it into the skin too. It's nice and fully saturated. You should be able to see if it's still stuck, if it slides still. Again, old transfer, we'll see how it goes. But once it's fully saturated, you can lift away the paper. If, anything, if you see anything kind of sticking, press down on it with your, your cotton round. There we go. Beautiful. Now any edges that are sort of sticking up, I'll go through with my little water cotton round and just tap them into the skin. Cool, it's kind of, you can kind of barely notice it. That's what's really nice about Prose transfers is that they do give that nice translucency that skin normally has. That's why I typically don't like to do scars with big, um, with big uh, foam latex pieces because you don't get that same skin translucency. But with things like silicone or Prose transfers, you can still have that, that translucency that reads as skin. Now I'm gonna add my other piece. I'm gonna match up that bottom edge together and give it a little bit of a turn. Since this one's not perfectly straight, I don't want this one to be perfectly straight. And saturate. So even with a little bit of glue prepped on there, this end didn't want to stick my skin. Like I said, five years old. Usually don't want to keep your prostate transfers for that long. I wouldn't even keep them for a year usually, but I just hate to throw stuff away. And then sometimes I do things like this and I need them. So that's why I have them. I'm going to take a little cotton around with some 99% alcohol. And I'm just gonna try to get some of this off. The alcohol won't completely take it off, but it, it helps. It's not like acetone and baldies. It's not gonna completely thin out, but it will it will take care of it a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And I'm gonna do that for any edges that are maybe a little bit too thick or didn't lay down properly. I'm just gonna take a little bit of prosade right at the top here to seal that in a little bit more. So now that everything is applied, I'm going to start to color things. And I'm gonna extend some of these scars and connect them together with just some of the two-dimensional scar stuff. But before I do that, I wanna blend all of this color together and make it look cohesive. I went ahead and added a little bit of powder to this Prose transfer to make sure that it doesn't stay sticky because a lot of the times the Prose will stay sticky, so it's a good thing to powder them. And again, always wipe away excess powder. Now we're going to start to color the foam latex scar, getting it to look like my skin tone first, and then we'll go and color the scar itself. I'm going to be using alcohol paint. The particular type of alcohol paint I'm using is European body art, working out of their palettes. And I'm going to be using the tattoo cover-up palette for the most part, with a little bit of red tones from their various other palettes. But first to get my skin tone, I'm using the lightest tones on here, which is the N1 and the W1. And with just a little stipple brush, I'm gonna start to pat the product in. I might need to go a little darker, actually. There we go, so. This brush is just a cut down brush that I've made into a stipple brush. You can use actual stipple brushes. You can use an airbrush. And I'm just very gently stippling in anything that should be my actual skin and not the scar. And you wanna make sure that the edges where the paint is meeting the skin itself are nice and feathered out. You don't want any harsh lines of demarcation.
And as you can see, I'm going further away from the skin than just the piece. That way I'm blending the skin into the piece. Now I've got that base tone down, I'm gonna go through and add a couple of other colors. Some lighter colors, some darker colors, and some more red mauve tones to really blend it into my skin. Before I do that, I actually wanna seal this base tone down with a little bit of Pro Seal. Just a quick spritz. That way it's sealing in that first layer that I put in. I'm now going lighter. Just lightly adding in those other tones. Now I'm gonna go through and stipple in a little bit of a light mauve. I'm gonna do another layer of sealer before I add in some of those final colors in there. Now the next set of colors I'm going to do with a spattering method instead of the stippling method. So I'm gonna grab my spatter brush, dip it into my cup of alcohol, then swirl it around in the product. So I pick up the color, put it on my palette. I'm gonna very lightly Obviously this is harder to do on yourself than say on a client because you have to keep your eyes closed for this. But spattering is a really nice way of getting a light amount of color onto the surface of the skin. Sort of like a poor man's airbrush. Now, if any of those colors go a little bit too harsh onto the skin, you can take a little bit of alcohol and just dab it up. Almost where I want my skin tone to be. Just gonna do a couple quick fixes. That's basically there. The last thing that I want to add though are my freckles. So luckily I am a fairly freckled face lady so it makes it easier to incorporate prosthetics into my skin because of that. Now with hiding any sort of edge or any sort of prosthetic what really helps is texture. So any sort of modeling, fleckling, flecking, things like that, all of that is going to diffuse the the line that's there, sort of trick the eye, diffusing that line, making our brain think that that line doesn't exist. So that's where freckles come in big, big handy. And a tip for making freckles is you wanna add a little tiny bit of olive to the brown uh, because that's what typically the, the undertone is for a freckle. It's not really gonna be that red or orangey base, it's gonna be more of a olive base. So I'm taking my olive tone and mixing it with W5. Maybe a hint of W9 as well. And you want this to be a little bit of a thicker pigment than the previous flecking. And you wanna go a little bit further away so that it's larger um, surface area. I'm gonna go through and sort of define some of these freckles. So just picking out a few that I wanna make look bigger, adding them in. Now that I have the base skin tone on there, I have it matching 
pretty okay for the most part. We're gonna go in with the scar colors. Now for my skin tone, it's going to be more of a mauve sort of pinkish red. Other skin tones are going to be different. So make sure that you look up reference photos for the particular skin tone that you are working with. So I'm going with just that straight mauve color and I'm going throughout the middle of the scar first. Small strokes going against the line of the scar to get that texture in. Now I'm gonna bring it slightly thinner down in this spot because that's gonna be a lower area. It's not gonna have as deep of a scar. If, if you're imagining someone slicing down the face here, this is the lowest spot and so it won't get um, as deep. But then we're starting into some of this prose transfer. So I'm just layering in that mauve color. Now with the paint, I'm going to extend a few of these scars. So I'm gonna extend the one up here and then down here, and maybe we'll extend this one a little bit down into here too. So this is where our two-dimensional scar painting will come in. So I got the base color down in there. I wanna go first with a little bit of red mixed into the mauve to create some deeper tones just in a few spots. And then I'm gonna go over with a skin tone to really blend it in. And mixing a little bit of a bright red into the mauve. I'm gonna put that darker color right in the edge to give a bit of dimension throughout maybe the thicker spots, so where the, the scars cross. Right up under here, I'm gonna add a little bit in. Especially in these just painted areas. So I have those darker tones in there. Now I'm gonna go through with a really thin brush and some of my skin tone and create more texture into there. So again, keloid scars, they tend to have that sort of cold skin look going across it. So that's what we're trying to achieve. I've mixed up some skin tone with a really skinny brush. This is Dallium Tools short liner brush. And I'm just going lightly and going all the way across, going into the skin as well.
The key thing with making anything look like skin tone is going to be the layering of different colors and different tones on top of each other. So you'll really wanna go in and sort of layer in all of these colors. That way they sort of read like their skin. Next thing I'm going to do is take a little bit of a lighter skin tone and just around some of these edges to highlight them a little bit more, especially around ones that are just done with just paint. So I have the tiniest little sipple brush, just, just a raggedy old paint brush. Pop a little highlight there. And I'm sort of going on the areas that are three-dimensional. I'm trying to hit right where the paint meets, the red paint meets my skin to try to diffuse that out a little bit too, as well as adding that highlight. Now I'm gonna go through and just finesse a little bit. Do a few final touches. What I'm gonna do next is seal all this down. Really important if you're going to be on set, especially for like a 12 hour day. You want that makeup to be foolproof. So I'm gonna seal again with my Pro Seal. I'm also gonna dust a little bit of powder because sometimes it can get a little sticky. I don't want too much powder though because I do want it to still have that shine of skin, which is what um, the Pro Seal adds a little bit of shine to make it look more skin-like. And there you go, three-way scar application. Now we have our foam latex, we have our Praze transfer, as well as some two-dimensional scar stuff. So that is our scar application. If you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed. If you are interested in more content like this and you wanna get some exclusive perks, you can go over to my Patreon and sign up for that. We have perks from $5 a month to $15 a month. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned a little bit and I will see you guys next time.